Out of touch for 50 years, now at last, two unsung war heroes can relish a friendship renewed. You old devil. Well, 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 my word, I wouldn't recognize you. Neither man had met since the liberation of Singapore and their own freedom from the cruelties of the Japanese prison camp. Their main responsibility had been the health of their comrades, but without medicines, they relied instead on a secret weapon. The wireless, bringing encouraging news of the progress of the war, but strictly forbidden by their captors. This we would have been executed, a brother and certain. Uh, one way or the other, either head off or shot or hung up, we don't know. And where did you manage to hide the set? Underground. Up trees. Impulse roofs of buildings. Bombed out cinemas. Uh, Japanese chicken runs. Uh, anywhere which I thought was safe. It, it was hidden one day with four people in a tent, all sitting on it. And he was operating the set, George was, whilst they were sitting on the set. It was an a afternoon session, if I remember rightly. Right. We all sat in this. Then uh, there was an alarm that uh, old Bumface was coming around. Sergeant Bumface, we called him. We didn't know which end to kick. And um, he came round. But he didn't smell anything. He was a goon, really. He was a Japanese medical sergeant. And uh, <laughs> we used to fog him. This is London. From the reliable voice of the BBC, they kept abreast of the Allied advance through Europe and the ebb and flow of the war in the Pacific. Finding the right place, the right opportunity and the right signal was the ultimate trial in daring and skill. It was difficult to keep it tuned in. Uh, to any particular station, and then once you got it, it would perhaps fade, start to fade a bit, you see. Of course, Robert's doing his right thing, and he's shouting at me, I'm not getting it properly, and sort of business, and uh, I mean, only two minutes to do it in. It was, it was a bit difficult sometimes. When they got the news, they were able to relax a little, the people who were sick seemed to come to life and they thought, well, we won't be here much, very much longer. Well, there's a friend I know who, uh, who lived in Barnes, actually, and uh, he, came, he came over to see me when I first came home. He was a prison war. And he came over to thank me for what we'd done. He said that uh, we'd saved his life. He would have given in because I used to say to him every day, it could be over tomorrow. Here is the news. Reports from America in the past few minutes say that Japan has accepted the surrender declaration issued by the United States, Britain and China from the Potsdam Conference. These reports quote the official Japanese news agency and have been picked up by wireless. We, could, we couldn't rejoice in any way, only inwardly. We still got this. We could have been shot. We could have been beheaded. I mean, we couldn't shout out to somebody the war's over. Everybody seems fine now. We're all going home. You couldn't do that. It took a fortnight before we could do that. Oh, it was a fortnight with mm -hmm. pent up emotions. Pent up. Fortnight. Absolutely pent up. But I, 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 no fear in my mind at all. I didn't the only thing I was bloody worried about was getting that in the kit bag and home. <laughs>